Welcome back. Today we're looking at technology giant Philips' first attempt at a palm-sized PC with the Philips Nino 300. So let's take a look. At the front we've got two indicator LEDs, a power button, a hole for the microphone and a front-mounted speaker. On the top we can see the infrared port, the compact flashcard door which I've fixed with a bit of tape, and the stylus slot. Down the left side we've got an up, down button, OK button and a back button. On the right side we've got four customizable buttons for application launching, a dial for the contrast and a power socket. And on the rear we've got these two mounts, I'm not actually sure what they're for. We've got a door that allows access to the memory module, this can be upgraded to 8 meg. At the bottom we have the battery compartment, it takes two double A's. And underneath we've got the slot for the cradle and a slot for a modem, this was an available accessory. As you'll see, compared to the Palm 5, this thing is massive. It's thick, it's heavy, and it's big. That isn't going to fit in a pocket easily. So I've already set everything up. This is the main view. With an overview, we've got a calendar function uh, with various different views. There's a to-do list, and at the bottom is the memo pad. The memo pad has various templates you can use. And you can input stuff either using the pen to write on the screen, or if you wish, you can input text using any of the methods that there are available. There is email facility on here. This is done using Inbox. You can create new emails, and these can be sent either through Outlook via your own computer or using the modem attachment. Being a Microsoft product, this of course comes with Solitaire, the game we all know and love and have wasted many hours on. The familiar operating system using the start bar makes this very easy to get used to. The dictaphone is linked to the top button at the moment. If you press and hold, it will record whatever you're saying. You can play it back using this button here. Stop it using this button here, and you can move up and down using the other button. For this specific device, Philips licensed two powerful pieces of software. The first one, SmartWriter, is handwriting recognition. It uses fuzzy logic in order to determine how you write, rather than forcing you to learn its handwriting. To do this, you need to use the Quick Trainer. Do not be fooled, it is not quick. this took a few attempts. It's not the only way of inputting information either. There is of course an on-screen keyboard should you wish to use that and there's also jot character recognition. This is similar to graffiti, it isn't quite the same and there's this rather novel input called text input T9. This uses a bit of fuzzy logic and essentially guesses what you're going to write using predictive text. When it pops up you simply add it by pressing the button or pressing space. The second piece of software that Philips licensed for this machine is called Pocket Commander. It's voice command. 
of a sort. You have to train it, but you have to train each individual word and action. There's a series of different initial actions, and then you train it for each program that's installed, you train it for each contact, you train it for any documents. So as an example, if we were wanting to train it in order to open our contacts, you click this, hit train, contacts, contacts. Once it's received two successful inputs that sound similar to it, it will then file that, and this can then be used as an action later. It's wired to the second hardware button down, pressing and holding. Go to Tasks. It can launch basic applications as well as initiating emails. Email. Albert Einstein. In addition, it can phone numbers using tone dialing. Dial. Dial. Captain Kirk. We're going to take a look at synchronizing the palm size PC. Because I'm missing the dock, I need to use an infrared port. I've got a polar USB adapter. We're going to synchronize with Windows XP. The simple reason is you can't install this on Windows 10. We're going to use ActiveSync 3.8 on this Fujitsu P1610. So I've found a couple of programs that we're going to try and install. And the first is a file manager, since the one in built isn't very good. And the second is a pocket artist. I'll put links to these in the description, assuming that they work. So I've plugged in my USB. Got my pumped up. So we're going to go communication. And PC link. That should establish an infrared link. That's the sound of active sync starting. And for the moment we're not going to synchronize any information. So I'm going to hit no. And we're going to just install this. So this establishes a connection. We can install in the default or we can install in the non-default. We're going to go non-default because there's not much storage in the machine itself, given that it's only 4 meg. So we can see it's going to take up 650k and I've actually only got 618k available. So we're going to go for the storage card. Given that it is 600k, it will take a while to transfer, so we'll just speed this up. Once that's done, we can see it transfer to the pocket PC. We're going to click OK. Pocket Commander installed without any issue, giving us much needed access to the file system. Opening it up. We can see from the root you can access the storage card and internal memory. Using this, it's been possible to demonstrate that the inbuilt um, notepad will open rich text format and text format files. So this has been useful to find out. The other application we installed is Pocket Artist. I needed to move the DIL file from the storage card into main memory and into the Windows folder before it would actually work. As you can see, once it opens, we've got various tools, zooming options. Unfortunately, I can't register this, so there's no way of saving files, but it demonstrates some of the things that were available. I also found two updates from Philips. I'm not entirely sure what they did, but they've added a version number, so we're now at ROM version 1.01. .01.
two other useful apps that I've found. The first one is Task Switcher. So again, this is a demo and it'll run 50 times when you first install it. But essentially what it does is it creates the options of switching task with various different options on hitting the button. So you can flick between tasks, which as I say, because the start bar isn't the same as normal windows, it's not possible to do generally. Pressing and holding, we can return to the home screen. So this is quite useful. The only other piece of software I did find and managed to get to work was this one, Fast Task. It loads into the notification box and double clicking on it brings up your registration initially and then brings up the task menu showing any running applications allowing you to close them. I've not found this particularly useful as it's only a couple of clicks to go to the same setting in Windows operating system itself. I've been using this now for about two weeks. I've had several crashes, but it is Windows, what do you expect? The Pocket Commander software is very gimmicky, but I love those gimmicks. It is big. If you like to use voice memos, it's a pretty good PDA. So after using the Philips Nino for nearly three months of lockdown for organisational tasks, not so much planning since we didn't do anything, um, I found it to be an excellent organiser. The good things, a big stylus. It's a big PDA, comes with a big stylus, makes it easy to do. The handwriting has really grown on me. It's very good, it works very well. And the fact that in the notes application you can simply write on the screen and it'll recognise it as either writing and, and format it as text or um, it'll uh, recognise it as a drawing and it'll let you move around the drawing. So uh, that's been quite good. Um, obviously the reminders on it are great. Um, the bat, the screen. It's a black and white screen. I like a black and white screen. It's good for reading by, it's good in direct sunlight, but unfortunately this screen in particular, it, the contrast isn't great and you get a lot of drag when you up the contrast levels. All that said and done, I have enjoyed using this and taking memos, uh, voice notes, the button position is excellent on it and the battery life is stupendous. I might be changing the batteries once a month and it's getting used every day. And so yeah, all in all, I would say it's a good, solid, dependable PDA. There's a couple of interesting glitches. If the backlight is on, um, you get um, uh, interference on the touch screen. So you end up, sometimes it doesn't recognize what you've written or you get strange lines appear in your drawings. That said, you know, that's not the be all and end all. I've enjoyed using it. For the money one of these would cost you online. If you were interested in an organizational tool, which is big, then this is perfect. And so yeah, Philips Nino, enjoyed using that. Um, in future videos, we're gonna have a look at compatibility of the Windows CE operating system and the Palm operating system, um, as well as some others with Windows 10. So stay tuned for those. Hit like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.